For those of you that are new, this is Science Periodically, the show where you get a quick break from home isolation while getting to know the school of science. So today's episode's going to play out a little bit differently than our usual episodes. So we're going to have both trivia and a guest, or I guess in this case, two guests. We have Dr. Kathy Mars and Dr. Jim Mars. So the trivia segment is going to be played on Kahoot. So you guys are going to be able to log into that by the app or by the website kahoot.it. And I'll give you guys the code when we begin at the end of the show. But before we jump into that highlight of the show, which is the interview, I'd like to introduce myself and go over a bit of news. So my name is Dustin Ryder, and I'm a senior here at IUPUI studying forensic science and biology. Originally, I'm from South Bend, so that's roughly three hours north from Indy. So one of my favorite things, though, at the School of Science is the endless resource, resources that we have. So I'm, if anybody's like me, you kind of find it hard to ask for help. And just knowing I have that opportunity to utilize those resources is a really big deal for me. Usually I'm dressed as a different scientist each week, and you guys get to guess who I am. So I'm not really dressed as anybody today, just kind of myself. So we want to really try something new, and we're going to be using riddles instead of dressing up. But if you guys really do prefer me dressing as the scientist, you guys just let me know in the chat or you can also email us. So last week's scientist was Marie Curie, a well-known physicist and chemist who is often called Madame Curie. Curie discovered elements radium and polonium a, and also coined the term radioactive. She was the first woman to also ever receive a Nobel Prize, but that really didn't stop there because she is what's considered one of the magnificent four and that means she's actually won two Nobel Peace Prize. I mean, two Nobel Prizes. So we didn't really have our usual amount of guesses this time, which is kind of why I've decided to award both Caitlin Smith and Matthew Mosley with a prize of their choice. So we're going to reach out to you guys shortly so you can let us know what you were eyeing. And then while we may be switching to those riddles, the prizes and the rules are still going to remain the same. So I'll, be, I'll give you guys that riddle both at the beginning and the end of the show. So make sure you guys kind of keep listening to that. So this week's riddle is, you may know me as the science guy, or perhaps you know me by my colorful bow tie. When concepts seemed terrifying, I made videos to help with your trying. Who am I? So again, you'll have that opportunity to receive a prize of your choice, which are shown on the screen right now. So your guesses can be sent to our emails, which is science at iupui.edu, and that winner will be announced next week. So moving on to that new segment of the show, Let's really start this off with a bang, quite literally. <laughs> so fireworks really lit up the sky this past weekend to celebrate uh, America's Independence Day. And they've actually come a long way <laughs> since their inception in seventh century China. But most people don't know the chemistry behind the light, noise, and all that smoke. So today's large firework displays are usually executed with computers to kind of coordinate their launch with the music. So a lot of times fireworks will emit these vivid colors because of how the elements behave when they get heated up. So I always might say this one incorrectly, but strontium produces red, calcium produces orange, aluminum produces white and silver, and then also sodium produces gold. Now the real trick is getting blue into the sky, which, heart, which scientists believe is their biggest challenge. So the copper ion used for blue has its emission kind of washed out by the intense heat needed to explode the shell. So next time you guys are watching a fireworks show, take a moment to kind of consider the amazing chemistry that's kind of occurring above you and keep on a lookout for those rare blue fireworks. So the next piece of news is all for all you inventors out there. So NASA is returning to the moon in 2024 and astronauts as per usual need oxygen, food, water, and you know, Toilets. <laughs> so all you inventors out there, NASA is calling on you to design the next generation space toilet that can operate in both um, microgravity and lunar gravity on the moon. So this lunar toilet challenge, also called NASA's Lunar Loo Challenge, uh, has a total prize of $35,000 to be shared among the top three teams in a junior category. So you guys have until August 17th to submit those designs, and I think it's definitely a good idea. Plus, it's got a really cool name, Lunar Lou Challenge. <laughs> now, like I said earlier, I'm a forensic science student, so I'm absolutely in love with forensic science. So to me, this news piece is really interesting, and right now it looks like we're using 3D technology as kind of a stepping stone. 
So 3D technology is providing forensic scientists a way to kind of present that fragile evidence now, forensics investigation of crime scenes often involve the analysis of evidence such as human bones, which are most times broken or damaged. So there's also a process called physical fit analysis that helps indicate, the, indicate and determine the association between people, places, and things involved in a criminal activity. Now, bone fragments are really fragile, so it can be very difficult to kind of handle and place them together. So this is why researchers at the University of Portsmouth are using 3D imaging techniques for physical fit analysis, and it allows them not to handle the original fragments as much, which in turn minimizes the damage and contamination. So this leads to better models and understanding of the evidence. Now, also my favorite part of this one, the virtual and social distancing opportunities. We have a little bit of everything. If anybody else out there is a huge Harry Potter fan like I am, there is a Harry Potter digital escape room that was created by a librarian in Pennsylvania. It kind of reminds me of the Chamber of Secrets, but a little less likely to be caught in Devil's Snare. And Lori's going to go ahead and put that link in the chat for all of you guys that are interested. Now, if landmarks are a little bit more up your alley, we have uh, virtual opportunities for that. Time Out published an article where you can visit the Great Pyramids in Egypt, all the way to the Great Wall of China. And I also definitely recommend exploring a few of those landmarks. I bet they're quite breathtaking. It's never gonna be quite the same, but it's always good to see those landmarks. And sticking with that outdoors themes, why not go hiking in central Indiana? Always check out their websites though before venturing there because information is definitely subject to change with COVID going on right now. But some of my favorites are Eagle Creek Park, which is over on West 56th Street, and Fort Harrison, which is on North Post Road. Both of those are in Indiana, and they're a decently short drive from campus. Now, okay, this is quite embarrassing, but if anybody out there also holds concerts for themselves, this is a good opportunity for you. You can catch your favorite Broadway songs free on YouTube, or if you or someone you love has Disney+, Plus, you can watch the movie version of the production of Hamilton, they do say, oh, I got a chat in here. Yep, there's the digital escape room that Lori posted in there for you guys. So as I was saying, you guys can watch that Hamilton movie production on Disney+. Plus. They do say the show must go on after all. Now that does bring us a wrap to this week's news segment, which then leads us to my favorite part of Science Periodically, our interview with the guests. We have Dr. Kathy and Dr. Jim Mars here with, here with us today, which are two very wonderful people and professors here at the School of Science. Many of you are going to get to know Dr. Kathy Mars very soon. Kathy teaches Biology K101 and is a well-known uh, professor among IUPUI students. Dr. Jim Mars also teaches a capstone class in developmental biology and conducts research using zebrafish to model fetal alcohol syndrome here at the School of Science. And if you guys were wondering, yes, they are in fact married. <laughs> so with that being said, Kathy and Jim, can you guys tell us a little bit more about yourselves? Sure. Yes, well, welcome everybody. Great to see you all. And thanks, Dustin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah. well, just, very, just a very little bit about ourselves or about me. Um, grew up in the Chicago area. Um, went to went to college in mid central Illinois. Did our graduate work, and that's where we met in Chicago. We've lived in California, and then we've lived where we did our postdocs at Stanford, and then we've lived here for about the last twenty years. So we have three kids and one dog, two cats. <laughs> <laughs> ah, man, I love that. <laughs> I think your son, Earth Science, right? Yep, just graduated. Yeah, I'm wearing, wow. I'm wearing my uh, IUPUI dad shirt. I don't know <laughs> if you can see that. Oh, you could match my dad. I got him on one really similar to that. I love it. Can't yeah, help so but be he, proud he about it, right? He uh, bachelor's degrees uh, in, um, in geology and then in um, technical communications. And then he's going to graduate school starting in the fall in, in uh, the earth science department. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's... Amazing. Congratulations yeah, to him on that one. That's so Very cool. Proud. Yeah, for every reason to be, man, that's awesome. So kind of going back to the whole biology aspect of this, it's one of the largest majors here at the School of Science, and it reach kind of extends far beyond biology majors. I assume your son has also had to take a few biology courses. So 
the other majors within the School of Science and students looking to kind of further that education with say professional school or graduate school kind of require that good biology foundation. So in your guys' opinion, why do you think it's a good idea for those science students to have that solid biology background, regardless of what science field they're going to? Yeah, well, I, I mean, I'd say, and Jim probably has some other things to say, and I wouldn't mind if people put in the chat, you know, please let us know what your major is and, you know, as we talk, but I think it's important for everybody to know a little biology because biology is all about the living world. So just being able to understand a little bit, even if you're not thinking about medical school or pharmacy school, understand how, how cells you know, do what they need to do and then what happens when something like cancer happens or understand how cells can protect themselves from viruses, for instance, you know, something that's in yeah. all of our daily thoughts. And it's also just a way of looking at the world too, you know, just understanding how the, the living world is interconnected with the rest of the planet and, you know, is subject to the laws of chemistry and physics and things like that. So there's so many ways biology can influence a career. If some of you are interested in, you know, maybe exploring public health or medical humanities, those are fields where maybe you don't need the depth of biology that a biology major would, but you have to have a foundation in just knowing a little bit about how cells and organisms are set up and how they work. Oh, looks like I hear one of the dogs. <laughs> yeah, that's our dog. He wants they're, they're like, they're giving their opinion on it. I think they can agree with the good foundation of biology there. <laughs> yeah, so the, the biology is everywhere. Biology is a, is a huge, growing so the, the the quote that i always remember is the quote that biotechnology is going to be to this century what the automobile was to the last and so um biotechnology is going to influence how we make energy in the future and how how um forensics is a you know a big part biology plays a big part in um in many many areas and so people who go into um other fields will intersect with with biology, so it's a good thing to know a bit about. No, I absolutely agree. So I kind of wanna focus on that concepts of biology one, since that's how a lot of students are gonna be introduced to the famous Dr. Marses. <laughs> so that's for all of you who are not really certain what that is, that's biology K 101. So that lecture size is a little bit on the large size. However, they do have recitations in labs, which make it a little bit smaller. So how do you guys feel that those three components of the class really work together for a better understanding and success in that course? Okay, well, yeah, I'd be happy to answer that one. So yeah, it's a five credit hour class. So a typical student in K-101, there's three hours a week where you're in the kind of lecture discussion part of the class. And that's where there's a lot of information. Usually it's in lecture hall, which is our biggest lecture hall on campus, it's called LE 101. And there we get, in, you know, you are introduced to a lot of the major kind of topics and um, areas that we study in K 101. And then once a week you go to lab, so you have a three hour lab and it could be any one of those five days. So it could be Monday through Friday, it could be right after class, all the way into the evening hours, depending on what your schedule is. And in the lab, students usually really love the lab. We have a really beautiful lab. We have nice microscopes and nice equipment. And that's when you get to use the tools of science. And we will, you know, you'll really learn how to use micros microscopes and uh, micro pipetters and run gels. And, you know, usually students, that's the part of the lab that they're really excited about. I think people like the, the whole class, really. But in the lab, you know, you kind of get to, you know, feel like a scientist because you are, you know, we have it set up so you can do some science. And then about 75 minutes, so one you know, class a week, you have a recitation. And that is led by a peer mentor. So students who do well in K-101 in one semester, let's say fall of 2020, could be asked to come back in the spring of 2021 and be a mentor for the class the next semester. So you would be in charge of, you know, our peer mentors are in charge of the next group of K-101 students. It's a great leadership opportunity, you know, for the mentors. And we might be talking a little more about that later. So I won't say much about that now, but I'd be happy to. But then that's a time when you get to kind of wrestle with the material a little bit more because we do an awful lot in class and class is only 50 minutes. 
So yeah. you could to spend a little more time with you and your small like lab and recitation group and really learn how to do those uh, topics in a little more detail. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. I remember the lab portion was probably one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. So you're right on that one, right on yeah. the money with that one. <laughs> So I feel like it's a key component for every class is to show up. And I feel like you guys can both vouch for that. Mm -hmm. So so if there are students who are still kind of finding it a little difficult and they need some extra help, what kind of resources are available to them? Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll answer and then I'll turn it over to Jim. Jim has a lot of really good answers too because of some committees he's on. But the main one, like Dustin just said, is, well, for heaven's sakes, come to class. <laughs> Whether class is going to be, you know, we're hoping classes are going to be as virtual, I mean, as, as in-person as possible this fall, but of course we may have some on Zoom too. And regardless of whether it's face-to-face -face or on Zoom, the number one, you know, criteria is show up. So show yes. up, get into a good place if it's in the lecture hall, if it's on Zoom, everybody's Zoom works a little bit differently, but the people who have their cameras on usually kind of rise to the top of the screen. And then the professor can kind of, or whoever is on the Zoom call can kind of see the pictures, get to know people by their, you know, by their faces and things. So number one is to just show up, ask questions, never be embarrassed to ask a question. Um, if, you're, if you're confused about something, somebody else is. And then if you do need a little extra help, we have a BEPCO Learning Center. So we have a biology resource center, and that's a really nice physical place. And then we also have some online hours too. And that's kind of a one-stop shop if you are looking for help with any aspect of K-101. Yeah, there's a lot of student resources. Um, I think it's a very important to uh, join the, the class and be engaged. It, it'll, it'll go a long way for you to connect and feel like it's a community. Even if it's an online community, try to get to know your fellow student and um, then use those uh, student success resources, work on your study skills, work on your time management. Mm -hmm. The game is gonna be, um, you're gonna have to up your game always, mm -hmm. not just from high school to college, but then as you go through college and as you go forward, whether it to a professional school or a graduate school or a job in life. Cause uh, I always point this out to, to students that, um, you still have to learn, you still have to uh, get, use in information, use it quickly, but also when you go into a career, you're also gonna be working full time. So you won't really have as much time as you do as a student. Mm -hmm. And so you have to learn to be, do it fast and do it efficiently. And so keep using those, uh, keep developing those skills, just like a working out, uh, exercising, uh, doing a sport, you, you, um, you need to uh, keep exercising those uh, developing those skills and uh, you'll improve over time mm -hmm. and you'll, you'll find success. Yeah, I absolutely agree with both of you on that. And I, I remember when I first started here, um, and I, was, I think it was literally your cat, your class, Dr. <laughs> Kathy Mars. Uh, and it was, it was really interesting. Cause I was like, Oh, this is much different than the biology I'm used to. But mm -hmm. as I got through it and I enjoyed it, so we actually have somebody who put in a question in chat. She says, how much material in bio K101 is typically covered in high school AP biology class? I took it in the past year and was just interested to know. Okay, well, thank you, Isabella. So I think you will be well set for K101 if you took it in AP bio because the curriculum is very similar as you know, but we know that there's a, there's a couple of chapters that we go into in a lot more depth. So you may find like, oh, the topics are familiar, but maybe, you know, we'll go into de more depth about one aspect and maybe your AP class did. Um, you talk to your advisor, of course, and your parents, but, and, you know, and other, other information you might've heard. But if you are going to be a biology major and you take an AP bio, I personally would strongly recommend that you take K101. It's a nice feeling to be one of the most prepared students in the class and be familiar with a lot of the topics than to, you know, AP out of it, which is, you know, certainly a possibility that you can do depending on that score and jump right into a sophomore level class. So I would, you know, again, you talk to, you talk to people around you about what they would say is best, but I'd recommend taking it and 
feeling like way like really good because you're one of the top students in the class because you've probably seen a lot of this material before and Isabella or anybody else you know if you had a favorite area of of that AP bio class feel free to list it and I'd, I'd just be interested oh we got another question yes, from so would would you yeah would you recommend to take review AP biology during the summer if they're taking the bio honors class at IUPUI they haven't taken biology since sophomore year well I'd certainly say yeah <laughs> <laughs> We're right ahead. Pretty soon I'll put the Canvas site up and I don't know when students can actually see it, but it'll be up. There'll be some introductory readings. I would say Jim would probably, you know, back me up here too, is if you like biology or science, it's also just fun to read some books or, you know, magazine articles, New York Times articles, websites that might have like cool things in biology. Um, K101, just so people know if you are taking it, that's the semester where we do cell biology, mitosis, meiosis, genetics, transcription, translation, viruses, biotech, and then some of the kingdoms of life like protists and fungi and plants and bacteria. Animal biology is more your next semester. So from Denise, who just put in the chat here. So really we focus a lot on cell and molecular biology in K101. So the dissections of the starfish and the you know animals that you would do, that's more, and, and people usually do really love dissections, but that's more for the second semester, which is K103. And I usually say that up front to people, so they're like, oh, I can't wait till we get to that. And it's like, oh, okay, that'll be January. Thanks, glad I knew. <laughs> but yes, I'd say if you love biology, like just you know, read, maybe brush up on some of your favorite topics. There's great websites out there about, like one is called Learn Genetics. So many quotes from the University of Utah. And you know, if you just put like University of Utah Learn Genetics, you'll go right there. They have so many cool up-to-date activities that you can do that are slightly interactive and some are just you know finding out there's a really great one on your microbiome if you want to know a lot about all the bacteria living in and on you you know you uh, just rush up on that <laughs> and my favorite is to lick your rats lick, lick <laughs> it's about mothers grooming rats that's a it's a lot of fun to lick your rats <laughs> oh my gosh um, i love that well actually <laughs> since we're on that topic of you mentioned the rats uh, oh, wait, we've got one more question before I go into that. And I How love dissection too. So yeah. not everyone does. And that's, that's a, that's, uh, yeah. that's a fun thing. And I, I'm all with you, uh, Denise. Yeah. Yeah. So Beethoven looks like says, how will dissections be handled when classes are online for the pr first part of next semester? I mean, I guess if you guys know the answer, you're more than welcome to go ahead. Well, yeah. So we're still working out how labs will be in labs. You know, it's, it's, we still have a six weeks to go. So we'll, you know, we have every intention though of having face-to-face -face labs. So you should be able to go into lab and the, you know, dissections are one thing that if content had to be moved virtually, I don't want to speak for our K103 group, but it might be that there's high quality dissections sometimes available virtually, but we all like to do these things, mm -hmm. you know, hands-on and in person too. So let's, I'll just say to, to Beethoven and, you know, others that you know, the faculty, Jim and I, and all the faculty, we're gonna do the best we can to make sure that when you are in lab, you're gonna be doing some really cool things. And then anything that might have to be virtual because of some coronavirus, you know, concerns, we'll make them as high quality as possible as well. And I mean, there's some awfully cool virtual human anatomy sites out there that are really high quality mm -hmm. and give you a, you know, a thorough overview of the human body that you probably you wouldn't get as a freshman you know we, we don't use cadavers in the freshman lab but you know there's some really high quality virtual dissections but yes i mean we're all going to be hoping we have as much face-to-face -face time as possible yeah, absolutely so assuming there's no more questions at least for right now um you both are kind of huge proponents of undergraduate biology research here and the biology department has a really amazing research program for the direct admits uh, for biology freshmen called the Freshman Apprentice Program. So that means, Jim, can you give me some background about your research and kind of what you're doing and the goals of it? Yeah, um, so a lot of my research, I, I've, I'm going to, can I share the screen? I'll just have oh, yeah, absolutely. I believe you can. Let me see if I can, uh, can you see that? Oh, there you go. Awesome. And um, so, <clears throat> 
I work on fetal alcohol spectrum disorder, which is uh, a, um, the most frequent preventable birth defect. So it's when mothers uh, who have drinking problems uh, during pregnancy, they, they drink alcohol and it produces birth defects. And you can see um, that uh, babies born with these defects have uh, specific things that are visible, but these are the most extreme cases. And um, so you can have a small head and uh, facial abnormalities and, and brain defects that affect uh, learning and, and um, behavior. And, um, and then other defects like heart defects are very common. And we've worked on, on these by modeling them in, in the zebrafish. And so the zebrafish, you can see um, the arrow uh, pointing at the heart, the black arrow, and uh, the heart becomes affected. Um, the white arrow points at the eye. The, the eye is smaller, the brain is smaller, the head you can see is a bit smaller in that image. And so um, it's, it's an opportunity to use a, a, a small um, vertebrate to uh, model the, the defects in humans. And um, so we, we've been doing a lot of behavior studies with the undergraduate research. Yeah, that's amazing. And that, and that, that allows uh, students to, um, to visualize, um, uh, to, to examine the, the defects. And so, yeah, I also have students that help the zebrafish care that work in the, um, the uh, freshman apprentice program. So they'll help us with, um, taking care of the zebrafish, um, feeding them, and uh, you learn how, you know, so that's all part of the research is to maintain the animal or uh, the plant or whatever you're working on uh, to maintain the stocks and, and um, day to day. And so um, the students get involved, they get um, an idea of where uh, uh, the way that research is done, the, the environment in the lab, and uh, the procedures, but also you get a little uh, home base that uh, allows you to, uh, to, to feel like you're, you're in the, the department, you're part of the community. Mm -hmm. And so it has a lot of advantages. So if, if anyone's thinking about, uh, on the fence about doing that, um, it's an opportunity to, um, uh, it's, you make a little money, but the, really the benefit is, is that you can, um, you can become a uh, part of the, the department or uh, integral part of the department. Mm -hmm. So Denise actually just put in a question here and I actually just recently finished my genetics course. She wants to know, would you guys know of any professors that work with genetics and how might I go about possibly working or doing research with them? Yeah. Yeah. The first step is to uh, maybe join the apprentice program, but otherwise you can volunteer for research and, and then, um, there's the uh, internship, like the uh, Health Life Sciences, uh, Life Health Sciences Internship, <laughs> LHSI. And um, then you work in the medical school or dental school, usually uh, with a faculty there. And that, that is a, a, something you apply for in, in, uh, in your freshman year or your sophomore year to do in your sophomore or junior year. Mm -hmm. And... Um, so there's volunteer and then capstone. When you finish your, uh, your, you do uh, research, whether it's mentored research in a laboratory or a library research to finish um, a capstone. So you can choose the, the more genetic oriented faculty. We have people who are working with gene expression like myself or with, um, with zebrafish is a very good genetic model. But then a, there's a, a few people that work on mice. Mm -hmm. And there's a, a laboratory that works on DNA repair, which is a, more biochemistry, but it, it's related to how the, the genes are repaired, the, the DNA is repaired, and how genetic mutations are produced and things like that. So there's a variety of labs. I would go to the the web page and look through the faculty and see mm -hmm. what they're doing and maybe even look up some of their papers by going they usually list some papers or you can use google google scholar to find their um their research papers it, it, it's going to be difficult to read it would be hard for me to read one of their 
somebody else's papers because they're a different field, but you can get an idea of what type of work, what type of research, which type of experiments they do and mm -hmm. see if it, if it excites you. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to tack onto that, Denise. Um, there's a variety of research like Jim mentioned really briefly, but it really just depends on what you're interested in in the aspect of genetics and what you would preferably want to research in. But I believe I'm, Lori, correct me if I'm wrong, but we have that AI that if you like type in a question, like say, what research is going on in genetics? Mm -hmm. I remember because I did all the answers for that. <laughs> You'll kind of get a whole list of like who's doing it and then what they're going to be doing. So I kind of suggest doing that. And then we also have another question in here. It looks like it's for you, Kathy. Which okay. topic of bio K 101 do students oh. struggle with the most? Okay, yeah, well. Let, we'll get to that. And I would also say, too, as Dustin and Jim both said, you can Google biology.iupui.edu. There we go. Biology research. Lori, just put it awesome. in there. And then we also have an entire department over in the medical school that's medical and molecular genetics. Mm -hmm. And that is, you know, as a freshman, it might be a little daunting to think about making contact with somebody over in the med school. They don't see a lot of undergrads, but there's no reason you couldn't. And usually what they like you like to see is that you're doing well in your classes. You're, you know, they don't need you to have all the content knowledge yet or the technical expertise. They'll tell you that, but they want to see that you're a reliable person who's going to show up when they want you to. And when you're there, you're going to work hard and, you know, those skills like that. So don't feel like you have to have a wealth of, you know, research experience to reach out to them and see if they might have a position. And then K101, I don't know what you all think. If you took biology before, you can put in, you can put in your information, but, um, Cellular respiration is something that students like the Krebs cycle, electron transport chain, because it's very complicated and mysterious. Um, and so I would say, you know, if anything, that's my, what might they struggle with. Um, just about everything we do is pretty darn complicated. So hopefully you really like detail. <laughs> hopefully yeah. you like to learn a lot about the intricate details of things. And then, you know, I think a lot of the material is challenging, but it's just a, an idea of taking it a bite at a time and, you know, you'll get it. But mm -hmm. cellular respiration is usually pretty challenging. Yeah, I think that's a thing that um, is really important to know, just what Kathy just said, is that you can do it. You just got to take it a step at a time. Sometimes yeah. when you look at the new topic and you think it's going to, you know, this is impossible. I've heard that organic chemistry is so impossible or whatever, whatever topic. But you know, there's people that have done it over and over every year and are successful. You have to um, to find that enthusiasm for it. Work hard and enjoy it as much as you can. It'll make it'll sustain you. And then realize that you'll go and you'll start doing it. And then as you get it done, you'll realize, oh, that wasn't as bad as I imagined it would be. And you've got to remember that lesson that you've learned before in whatever topic you, you stressed out about before you did it and then you did it and you were yeah. successful. Um, just remember that that happens over and over again, that you're, it's hard. I, I do it. I still do it. I say, Oh, I, that's so impossible. I can't learn to program a computer, you know, that whatever it is. And, um, but you start, you take it one step at a time. And then when you look back, you say, Oh, that wasn't as bad as I th you know, yeah. thought it would be. And yeah. so always try to remind yourself of that as you're beginning yeah. and you're feeling a little stress. Yeah. yeah. And I think that again, touches back on what Jim had mentioned earlier, earlier about like, you're kind of always going to be learning and just finding that passion in something, even if you're struggling really, really makes a difference. And I can definitely agree with that as somebody who's taken biochemistry. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Biology is one of my favorites, but chemistry, yeah, it's you know, I'm, I'm finding it, I'm liking it. So yeah, convince yourself you're liking it. And, um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you have to, you, it, it makes it so much harder if you just say, I, you know, I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. And then you'll just convince yourself of that. Yeah. So convince yourself of the other and say, I'm going to enjoy this. I'm going to find a way to enjoy it. Yeah. So we have another question from Aisha. She asks, can you talk more about the biology first year science apprentice program? Yeah, and so Aisha and I think maybe Isabella asked too up there, but, but yes, yeah, so this is, look for an email from Dr. Patrick Gentry, and he will likely be reaching out as we get a little closer to the start of the semester. 
Um, but it, it, it could be, you know, he might be reaching out to you as you're going through your orientations to pick your classes for the semester. So just be on the lookout for that. And we hear from a lot of students, I do, in K101, they're like, oh, I remember getting an email about that and I didn't really know what it was, so I didn't follow up. So the spaces will fill up. There's what, 60, 75 ish spaces. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you, and then as Dustin said, it's only about 10 hours a week, 10 something an hour. 10 hours a week, most of us waste that much time a week, you know? <laughs> so it's not going to tax you too much to work for 10 hours a week. And you're working in the department that you're part of. So you get to put your book bag down somewhere and the faculty get to know you. And so it's just the right amount of time to have a job, but it's not going to pull you away from your studies and it's going to have multiple benefits. Oh, there we go too. Thanks, Lori. Yep. Yeah, that's There's yeah. No, week, I agree. You can begin looking at it now and, um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great benefit, just express your interest in research yeah. and uh, getting involved with laboratories and learning about the department. And, um, but uh, it's, a, it's a great opportunity to get to know people. Yeah, and so you don't have to travel to your job. Like if yeah. you, in some jobs, you're gonna need to get in your car and go across town. And then that's the t also the time that you'll uh, spend, but rather you'll just walk out of class and walk into lab, uh, walk into your job and that's an advantage as well. Um, it, it's uh, so yeah, it's a it's a good way to get to know um, people in the department mm -hmm. and uh, get to know what you become exposed to graduate students. I, I when I started undergraduate research, I hadn't met graduate students. I, they are TAs, I guess, were our graduate mm -hmm. students. So you get to know them, but you don't get to know them as a as a person in the lab. And so it's a different. Um, a different type of experience that you get right away and then you become yeah. integrated into the department. Yeah. It's surprising how, how different things are once you um, enter a research lab. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. So we are running a little bit low on time here. So I'm okay. gonna give you guys one last question. Great. So it's definitely for both of you. What kind of advice do you have for the incoming science freshman, regardless of biology or any other type of major? Okay, mm -hmm. go ahead, yeah. Well, I would say is, you know, expect it to be a lot different from, from high school, but in a really enjoyable way, I hope you will think. And probably you're all enjoying high school pretty much, depending. I know everybody had a weird end of the semester last semester for sure. <laughs> but, you know, it, it will be a, a chance for you to kind of start in a fresh place, start over again. And the, my advice would be is just take the first six weeks or so very seriously. This is the time when you want to get ahead of things. You want to be at the top, you know, like it's going to, because it will be difficult. Don't be surprised if your grades aren't, you know, are just a little more tenuous than they might have been in high school. You're getting your footing. So don't let that, you know, don't let that discourage you if it's a little more challenging. But at the same time, make sure you're as prepared as you can be for every single test and assignment. And then if you find like that was, I was way over prepared, you can always back down, but the, you know, you don't want to suddenly find that you're at the bottom of the hill and the snowball is like getting bigger and bigger, you know? So I would just say like, enjoy it, make, you know, go to any club meetings you can go to, try to get involved with as many things, go to your faculty members office hours or Zoom office hours or whatever. It's great to get to know at least one faculty member a semester who knows you by name and they can see you and be like, oh, hey, Dustin or whatever, you know, yeah. so then at the end of a couple of semesters, you might need a letter of recommendation or you might want to find out how to work in a lab or something and like that person knows you by name. So I would just say try to like embrace, you know, the environment take the maximum potential of trying to get to know people and get experiences. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, the get involved and that's great, but um, take it a step at a time too. So yeah. get, start working hard on your, on your studies and see how much extra time you have mm -hmm. before you take on a new thing. And once you take on a new thing, if you still have time, take on a second thing. And so develop that. But first is to get your um, footing, as Kathy mentioned, get your footing, feel comfortable, get to know a couple people around, whether, you know, your peers, and then also the faculty or staff and, and get to feel at home. That's important to yeah. feel comfortable, feel involved, and, uh, and feel uh, like it's your community. And because it is, and have fun. 
I loved college. So did um, I, yeah. I didn't. I didn't leave. I'm still here. And, <laughs> I was uh, going to say. I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, uh, the, when I left high school and went to college, it was um, this was my opportunity to really um, work hard and and enjoy the the work, do it for myself. So that's the difference. I think is you're told you have to go to elementary school you're told you have to go to you know the, the truancy officer will chase you down if you don't or whatever and um but rather this is for you you've made the choice to come here you're paying uh, or somebody's mm -hmm. paying to come here and uh do this and so it it's an opportunity to to uh, grow and succeed yeah. and it's for you and so do it for yourself and and really enjoy it yeah the last uh, I, thing I that was good add one more thing too is also kind of think about where you want to be in four years because some of you are like, oh, I know, I want to be in med school. I want to be in dental school. I want to be in pharmacy school. I want to go to grad school in physics. You know, I want to work in at Lilly. So think about what that is. And you can't start thinking about that, of course, in your senior year of college. And it's going to depend on, you know, well, it, let's just say you'll, you'll make your life a lot easier if that first semester, biology, chemistry, math, biology, chemistry, math, you know, there's always a test. There's always a project. There's always an assignment. And if you can find a way to structure it so you, you know, have a successful first semester and then first year, you're on your way to what you want to be doing four years from right now when you might be going to the white coat ceremony, which is happening right about now, right? When do they do it? Sometime in July. So, that you know, when sounds the, right. yeah, when all the new MDs, you know, get their first, you know, short, you know, white medical coat. Medical students, yeah. Yeah. So just think about where you want to be in four years and if it's, if it's tough your first year, well, that's okay. It, it'll get easier. So, yeah, I agree. And that's actually funny that you mentioned the focus on your first semester because last last time we asked like students, what are their like big suggestions about getting into professional school? And somebody actually mentioned to focus mm -hmm. on that first semester GPA because it kind of paves the way. It does. So. Yeah, enjoy it. Enjoy it. Work hard. Be successful, and then build on that success. Yeah. If you if you struggle and get a, a um, and don't gain the knowledge that you need for the next class, then that'll just make the struggle harder. So just build on your successes. Mm -hmm. First get those successes and then build on them. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. And it's always a pleasure to talk to both of you. So thank you for joining us on Science Periodically today. And I hope you guys have a really great day. Now, I guess thank we'll you. go on to the Kahoot. And again, if anybody has any more questions, for Kathy or Jim, you guys are more welcome to send it to our science at IUPUI.edu email, or you could also directly contact them by email. We probably will put that in there. I, look, I see Lori typing on there. So we'll probably end up doing that. Please put them in the chat or whatever. Or we could. Yeah. Yeah. And good so luck we're to put everybody. Them in the chat. Even though we weren't able to speak directly, good luck to everybody in their, in their freshman year. And uh, let can us I, know. Can I play Kahoot? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, our Kahoot's actually going to be a mix of like things here on campus and around Indiana, just a whole bunch of things. So it's going to be a nice randomization. And we've already linked Kathy's right there. Lori just put it in. So Jim's yours is coming up soon. <laughs> so again, if you guys want to contact them, you're more than welcome to. Now, the Kahoot and the login information is actually going to be put on the screen real quick. Let me put it on there. I have it. And there it is. Ah, too fast. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> All right, so the game pin is 467. Oh, man, it went away on my screen. 467-6344 is going to be the Kahoot. You guys are more than welcome to start to log into it. However, I'm going to go over a couple reminders before we get into the game. So first is, don't forget to submit your guess for this week's riddle to science at iupui.edu. Again, that winner is gonna get a prize of their choice. And the riddle is, you may know me as the science guy, or perhaps you know me by my colorful bow tie. When concepts seem terrifying, I made videos to help with your trying. So who am I? Last week, we asked on Instagram, what makes you happy? So the response is really varied, but a few of the highlights are the dogs. I might've sent that one in myself, you know. <laughs> There's cooking, napping, a strong cup of coffee, and friends. However, I think my favorite is the answer of myself. That's a very, love that. Now, this week's Instagram question of the week 
is actually going to involve one of today's guests. So we're going to reach out to our current students and ask them what their best memory from Biology K 101 with Kathy is. So keep an eye out on our Instagram, IUPUI Science, and you're going to see some really great, awesome answers, especially since Kathy used to do the Halloween dress ups for, I believe it was extra credit. That was always fun. Yeah. Now we appreciate, like I said, everyone that joined today's episode of Science Periodically. So make sure you guys are tuning in every Tuesday. Next week's episode is going to be a mix of neuroscience and psychology with Dr. Steve Bohm. He's the psychology chair and the neuroscience professor here at IUPUI. Uh, 